It's now probably nearly 40 years that I have worked in primary health care um, and I came upon it uh, by accident. So I think uh, it started very slowly. It started at a time when Aboriginal health um, was almost um, an accident. What now keeps me there is um, I have been, I have been privileged and fortunate to have been trained and given opportunities of another culture that few people ever have in a lifetime. I have always, um, as I said, primary health care, that initial care to enable, to teach people, be responsible for, you know, your own health, how you eat, what you eat, how you behave, you know, washing, you know, now because of the changes now that, um, you know, modernity, uh, it is no longer good enough that you can get around with grease on you all day long and for days on end and, you know, sorry business where all the um, ochre and things stay on you for, because there is so much now infection and, um, you know, Western disease now that impacts now on people's lives. So what keeps me there? We have um, six health workers and trainees and another one wanting to start. It is um, the ability to, I think, always leave in a community something behind, even if it's a tree. You know, you plant a tree, you go to a community and you leave something that's going to grow. I've always worked off 10% satisfaction and 40%, 90% frustration. And I guess that um, if you're looking in remote health now, especially now, um, 10% isn't being too greedy, but if you don't get it, then you leave. There's an old axiom in the bush that you have to be mad, a missionary, a misfit, um, to go and work in these places. And I think it's probably an element of that in most people, uh, or mercenary. Um, you know, if you work in this, I think there are people that probably are outside of that, but it is still probably one of the frontiers of, in, and you said, you know, romantic, sounds romantic. Um, it's not romantic, in my, you know, because it's hard work. You have to have commitment and motivation. And I guess, um, for me, hospital was never an option. It was just, I could never. I have since relieved for colleagues, you know, in rural Queensland while I've been on leave, you know, um, just to provide, you know, they couldn't get staff. So I'm happy to go in and do, you know, I'll do 10... Ten shifts in a in a, um, in a month, you know, and I don't mind doing the night duty, but um, it I can't, you know, you're coping with it's different, and I think uh, yeah, it's more civilization, but um, to be an independent practitioner, you're working with the whole family. That's I think this is the crux of it for me, is that you're not just dealing with a patient in a bed that today happens to be an appendectomy or whatever. Today it is you're dealing with. Here's a kid failing to thrive, um, the mother's gambling, the father's drunk, um, spending the kid's money. Uh, this kid hasn't eaten in 24 hours. So in the family, in to the family, what's going on here? You're sorting all the time. Where's the aunties? Who is going to be carers for this kid? I think, you know, you, you really have to be a pretty rounded, contained person uh, so that you don't have lots of baggage either that you bring to communities. And I think, again, it is the motivation for why you would want to go out to these places. Now, I know, you know, some of my colleagues who um, could never work in mainstream because they can't get on with people or they don't... You know, if your motivation isn't right, if you can't get on with teams of people who are changing and personalities and you get them all, um, you know, then you really are... You're going to struggle.